All right, so it's been about six months since we've been gone from home. We're here for two weeks, and hopefully I can squeeze in as many projects as I can. Um, obviously, the first thing I need to do is get in the tank and scrape this algae by hand. Uh, my dad's been taking care of the tank while we've been gone, and he just hasn't had the time to be doing the mag float every day. And once you miss a couple days in a row, a lot of those patches, you're just not going to have any luck with using the mag float. So that's the first thing I need to do. Um, also, I want to do a protein skimmer. I've been planning that for a long time. I got all the supplies for it, so hopefully we can uh, get that together. It's uh, We're going to do it out of wood and uh, use that paintable pond liner stuff you guys have been talking about. So it'll be a nice little proof of concept. Maybe if it works really well, we can uh, use it for some other builds. So that'll be the first time we're using that stuff. So hopefully it works out well. Um, I got to do a big water change. I got to get out to the property and do some work out there and maybe we can do some videos and kind of show you guys uh, some sneak peeks on other projects that we want to be doing. Uh, we got a lot coming up. Um, so I'm really looking forward to all that. Um, the rest of the video, I'll kind of answer some common questions you guys have been asking. So I think hands down the most common question you guys have been asking about this setup is temperature control during the winter. And believe it or not, it's actually really easy. So we only have a one 1000 watt heater in the sump that's set to go off when the water dips below 75 degrees. And very rarely does it even ever have to go on. Maybe four or five nights during the coldest periods during last winter that it even went on. Um, I think the, the pumps and the UV sterilizer and all the other equipment definitely helps heat the tank. But also the sheer volume of the tank itself is going to really help stabilize any kind of temperature swings. And then obviously the greenhouse effect of the building alone is going to capture all that sunlight energy during the day and really help warm the tank up naturally. So another common question about this tank is whether we're ever going to do live coral. And that was actually the intention in the first place was to do live coral in this setup. But plans kind of changed towards the end abruptly and that's kind of why some of the filtration and the plumbing looks so rushed uh, because it was so we are going to be doing live coral in this setup we just have a little less than one year before we're permanently home and then we can actually start trying out the live coral in this setup and i think it'll be really interesting to see how well they do in the in the natural lighting you know, it could, they could benefit from it or it could be more of a headache than it's worth. I think the difference in photo period from this far north may be um, detrimental, I'm not sure. So it'll be a fun experiment. I definitely wanna do some soft coral. I think that would look really cool in this setup with the, uh, the flow, just kind of rocking them back and forth in that natural lighting. So I look forward to doing that. So another common question you guys have been asking about this tank is the actual cost of the build itself. And that's kind of a difficult number to quantitate just because we already had all the tools that we needed. We had a lot of the equipment like the protein skimmer, the pumps, the lighting already from previous builds. Um, so really the true cost of the tank and the, the building that houses it was the lumber the pond liner, the acrylic panels, and the polycarbonate greenhouse covering. Um, we were already redoing the backyard anyways, and this was kind of like a little side quest that we ended up doing. Um, so to estimate the build itself, I would put it around $10,000, which really, when you think about it, isn't too obnoxious for a 3,000 gallon tank. I think if you were to buy it, it would probably, you know, I wouldn't even know. It would probably be five times as much, I would guess, at least. Um, I'm sure it would be a lot less headaches doing it that way, but um, it wouldn't be that fun. All right, so clearly I was a little over ambitious with uh, 
building a six foot protein skimmer out of wood in just two weeks. Um, this is as far as we've gotten, and I think we're gonna have to wait until I come back home in a month and a half for another two weeks um, to really finish it. We've gotten pretty far though. Um, you can see the, the basically the skeleton of it is completed as the inside. It's a 30 inch inside diameter, four feet tall up to here, and then another two feet for the for the collecting cone. Um, this outline is uh, the acrylic window that's going to be in there. Um, we still got to do buttresses from this bottom plate up to the top plate, and that's going to help support any outward pressure from the uh, water. And this goes over there, cut out the hole for the collecting cone. Still got to do all the bulkheads and plumbing. Not quite sure exactly how I want to do it, so it's probably a good thing that we're not going to completely finish it. So I got some time to think about what else we want to do. Obviously, we didn't get to the painting part, um, which might be a good thing too. I hear it's a pain in the butt, and I do not want to rush that part because I think that's going to be the most crucial part that determines if we fail or not. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah,